Good morning, friends. This is Tracy Brown, your somatic nutrition therapist and attuned eating expert. And we are on the topic of binge eating this week and just talking about like what it is, what people are experiencing, and more importantly, let's do some de um, mything about it and how to heal. So it is Thursday. I typically do lives Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This week, I'm doing my second one on Thursday. I'm sharing this with you because it took me a long time to learn how to be truly authentic and not so much since I've been doing videos here online, but just in general in life. Um, and yesterday I just wasn't feeling like exactly how I wanted to, to come here and encourage you how it would feel and what it would look like. And I don't really, I don't, I only pre-plan sometimes themes. I don't have any scripts. I don't think through everything I'm going to say. That has never happened in a video. I just teach from my experiences with in, in this field for you know, 15 plus years and from my own personal experiences and try to make it as general as possible to help as many people as possible. So that's where it comes from. So yesterday I didn't do a video because it wasn't quite flowing in my head about what I felt would help you, so I waited. And this morning, sure enough, the title came and here we are. So we're gonna talk about the anatomy of a binge and what you're looking for to know how to bring yourself some relief. So my first disclaimer is there's nothing ever wrong with binging. It gets such a bad rap because binging can be mind and heart saving. It can, you know, I can look back during the times I was a restrictive eater and binging probably um, helped save some of my, my organ systems and health. When I was just binge eating, it was the only thing there for me. So I look back on those times and I was like, of course I binge. Like, totally not the worst thing in the world to cope with what I had to cope with. It's just that physically I didn't feel well. Um, and I got to play, and of course it's financially, I didn't want to keep paying for binges. And lastly, it's, um, I just wanted to learn out a better way to how to feel my feelings. So I started to de deconstruct my binges. I'm going to share what I learned on working with myself. And then, you know, a little bit of amalgam of the, you know, decade and a half of working with people who are struggling with binge eating. So what I want to share is that binging has different sources that the root of them. And so we want to remember, as we talked about in Monday's video, that binging always has a root in restriction and deprivation of some kind, whether it's caloric deprivation, the kind of food you're eating deprivation. Um, the biggest one, obviously, is deprivation of care. All right, we just either don't know how to feel feelings and give ourselves the care we need because that was never modeled. We don't have a neural pathway for that. Um, <clears throat> but that's the biggest one. And of course, our mental restriction. So maybe you're not calorically restriction, restricting, but you're mentally restricting. I shouldn't eat that. I'm gonna get in trouble. I need to go on a diet. I gotta lose weight for my health. All those things can trigger a binge. Even my number one trigger for binges was thinking about restricting. I didn't even have to do it. I would think about it and then go to Walgreens and get candy and you know eat that until I didn't feel well. Um, that was probably the number one trigger. So I just start looking at the the precursors to a binge. That was something that's really helpful. So, so number one, anatomy of a binge is looking for restriction or deprivation. Re deprivation in cal calories eaten compared to like what your needs are. Deprivation in the kinds of foods you're allowing yourself to have because typically we binge on the foods that we think we shouldn't, right? And some kind of permutation, some kind of food group permutation, whatever. Deprivation, I mean, I know this is this feels like a big stretch, but like this, um, um, this repression of like emotions and needs, it's like one of those things that if you're telling yourself you shouldn't feel a certain way, you should be over this by now, it's not that important, I don't matter, that's a deprivation of like acknowledgement, like self-acknowledgement, and it's abandonment, and you know, that's going to bring up wounds. And then of course, um, just in general, um, deprivation of care, like your body says stop, but you keep going because um, you feel like that's what your work um, your work culture demands, or or maybe they don't say it outright, but it feels that way. Um, and so whether that's being misunderstood or whatever's happening, so deprivation of all kinds, that's really, really important. 
um, to take a take an hour, take a sheet of paper and a pen and write out any of the ways in which you're feeling like there's restriction or deprivation in your life. And to be pretty, pretty honest, we all have some in our life right now in terms of like freedom, right? So that should be on your list. Number two, think about just as like for diet. Dieting is always like, well, that seems like the antidote to, to binges, right? I mean, it never is. It's, it's the antidote that the diet culture gives us, right? But think about the active. We're just going to do a little bit of, again, um, the experience of eating. Think about what it feels like when you eat. You, we're, we're wired to enjoy food. So right there, if we're lacking enjoyment in other places of our life, and yeah, we're, we're joy starved, we're um, attention to ourselves in detail starved, like meaning you don't give yourself much time about anything, you might give yourself time and attention to detail about the food you might be binging on. So there's pleasure in the whole eating experience. So you might be eating because you're lonely and the only times you didn't feel lonely when you were eating in community with your family, your friends or whatever, and it's a connection to that. So think about all the ways in which eating is pleasurable. The mouthfeel, the crunch, the chew, the smell, um, the way it moves in your mouth, the way it goes down, like touches your tongue, down your throat, how it feels as it gets in your stomach, the warmth or the, the weight of it. Um, of course, the taste, the smells, the sensations, the, the, um, the visual of it. Think about all the ways in which eating is pleasurable and what that's doing for you as you're eating. Now, some people tell me, and I'm not going to, I'll put some of my personal experiences in here, but some people tell me um, the anticipation of, of getting the candy. This is how I used to feel, the anticipation of getting the candy. And that first couple of really strong tugs and chews for me it was candy. Um, brought about one some excitement and like a it's almost like a, a slide from like my the heaviness of the situation I felt trapped in and I would just slide in this other little can, uh, candy land universe and for a while I had a break from it that was it um, another other time binging can feel like just that whole mouth feel taking that in process um, just sometimes this, the sensory stimulation that we're missing in terms of like relaxation or um, just a new experience. Sometimes if like your day is just the same old unhappiness, let's say, or maybe you're not even sure. Maybe on the surface it feels like, I don't even know why I'm binging. And, and I promise, Tracy, I've cleaned up any and all mental and physical deprivation. It's not that. And we look at the food and it's simply like, oh, simply you're very stoic <laughs> and you don't let yourself have much range of emotion and so food is the way that you're doing that there's the the there's joy there's silliness there's letting go all the things you're doing through the food are on your plate are just a mirror of what something's happening in your life so there's all kinds of reasons that we could be eating and our job is to be really compassionate and curious witnesses to that experience so really Deconstructing that whole thing will teach you the anatomy of your binges. If you need some help figuring out the anatomy of your binges, because again, like I disclaimed in the first part of the video, binging is one of the least bad things we could ever do to help cope with something or to help communicate something. It's just that we all know long term, it doesn't feel good. And we don't want to do it for all kinds of reasons, which we talked about earlier. So don't be ashamed of that. Actually stop being afraid of even talking about binging and be willing to be really curious. Oh, so I got up and I was doing okay. And then I tripped over the dog and then I broke my favorite vase and then named the emotions and what happened. And as you reached for the food and, and went there and what did, all those sensations and the stomach feel, whether it felt good or not, whatever happened, and you could say, well, it just gets me out of there and gets me numb. Okay, that's how we're trying to do. Not the worst thing ever, but we want to be able to help you have resources. So when you're, you're feeling yourself come up, out, or down and out of your window of tolerance, it doesn't feel so scary and you have other resources. That's all we're trying to accomplish here with deconstructing and decoding the anatomy of a binge. So if you have questions about your binging, 
and you'd like to actually work through years, please give me a call. And we spend tons and tons of time doing that to the point where it's like, oh, I see this is like in my rotation if I need it, but it's kind of, kind of taking the zip out of it. So it's not feeling like it's the only thing there for me anymore. And that's the goal. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.